Well, good morning, Miramar, and welcome to the show. I'm your host, Tamara G. Don't forget, check us out on all of our social media. We're on Facebook, Twitter, and Instagram at City of Miramar. We all know it's right here in Miramar, and we also know that it's right here in our neighboring communities as well. And with me today, I have Adrienne Chadwick. She is the arts manager at the Opalaka Community Development Corporation. There is a big exhibit that's going on there right now. Actually, it's going to be going on uh, throughout the summer, I believe. So we're going to talk to Adrian about it. It's called Beyond Tradition. Welcome to the show, Adrian. Thank you. Thank you so much. Thank you for having me, Tamara. Not a problem. So tell me, what is Beyond Tradition? Because I know it's looking at African sculpture. And, and how did you guys decide on this would be the art exhibit that you would go with? Sure, so here at the Opalaka Community Development Corporation, we have the Opalaka Arc, which is the Art and Recreation Center. And that uh, space has been a community gallery, urban farm and co-working space for the last mm, eight years or so. Okay. Um, so we typically have about two to three exhibitions per year. We try to focus on local artists, um, artists of the black diaspora, African diaspora, and this exhibition is very special because this is the first time that we are showing our newly acquired collection of African work. Um, this collection was acquired by OLCDC in 2018 and 19. Um, it comes from the collection of Bill Karg, who is a collector and um, art expert in African art, who had a commercial gallery space in New York City um, for many years, and he spent time on the continent, across the continent in the 60s and again in the 80s and collected all of this work. Um, and he decided that, you know, he's kind of getting on an age and he wants this collection to be somewhere in a space where it will be able to be viewed by the community and interacted with by the community. And so he and Dr. Logan, our CEO, um, decided that the, the work would come here. So we were able to take on a collection of 75 works of art. Um, the Beyond Tradition exhibition is focusing on the sculpture in the collection. So it's about half of the collection, about 40 works. Um, the entire collection uh, has artists, includes artists from across the continent, but Beyond Tradition is focused on East African artists. Um, Zimbabwe is one of the countries that we are looking at, um, and the Shona sculptures here in the background on the pedestals are the Shona sculptures. They're stone sculptures made by three generations of um, artists from Zimbabwe, and the works which you cannot see right now, the wooden sculptures which are on the ad, those are by the Makande people, and they are originally from Mozambique and um, moved, immigrated north to Tanzania um, while making their, their wood carvings. And it's a kind of a family style um, making instead of maybe we're used to artists, an artist makes a piece and then puts that piece on the wall and signs their name on it. Mm -hmm. And that's how the Shona sculptures are here. But the Makande sculptures are made by a group of people. So the, the youngest learner starts the, starts the wood sculpture and the more, the more knowledgeable sculptor finishes the sculpture. It's made by a family. Well, I can tell you, Adrian, I was sitting here. I was like, now she's in an art gallery. Obviously, she's the art manager. So she would be showing us the art and where we can go to see the exhibit. This is the prettiest background <laughs> that anybody could have on <laughs> zoom or anything i'm thinking wow that could really be a, a, you know a meeting background it's so beautiful mm -hmm. how you. did they yes how did they decide <laughs> um which which items to sculpt like what is there is there just something that you automatically say you know i'm gonna make a sculpture of that or does it just come to each artist you know individually different um the shona sculpt can you hear the train going by? I can, but it's fine. <laughs> so that, speaking of the train, you can take the tri-rail from wherever you are to Opalaka CDC, and the train station is right across the street. And so there you, you go. can get here from public transportation. <laughs> there you go. <laughs> um, so basically, Beyond Tradition was curated by our resident curator, Tamela Mosaka. Mm -hmm. He's a world-renowned curator who is from South Africa. He's been with us for at least four years. And he, um, he lives in New York City. Um, so he comes down and, and works with us on, our, on curating these shows. 
Um, I, I think that the artists, the Shona sculptors, the reason why we're calling it Beyond Tradition is because the intention of the exhibition is to help the public understand that Africa is not a monolith because we sometimes think of Africa as one place instead of 54 countries with you know over 75 languages. Um, and also because we kind of sometimes have this, um, this thought process about, about African art as being from the village, you know what I mean? And so these, these artists are, are all thinking about all different types of things. They're not only thinking about you know, village life, they live in cities, they live in villages, they live in apartments, they live in the same way that we live, both rural and, and city, city living. Um, and, and they're making art just like anybody else is, you know, thinking of a concept, some of the work is abstract, some of it is realistic. Um, and so it's, it's all very different, but it's all about Africa today. It's not about Africa in the past. And that's how museums and, and, and art spaces have kind of pigeonhole African art in the past. Tribal yeah, masks, past. you know, they just think of that tribal mask. That's the only art that comes out of Africa, yeah. Right. And so you mentioned that you all received it in 2018, 2019, and, um, you know, y'all been holding on to it <laughs> because apparently uh, you guys couldn't, you know, do the exhibit during this little thing we had called a pandemic. Mm -hmm. um, <laughs> and so tell me a little bit about how, um, you know, particularly artists made it through these last two years because, uh, if there's no exhibits, then artists can't get paid to show their works. Um, and so what have you heard, uh, and being an art manager, obviously you're in the arts yourself, you know, what have you heard from the artists? Was starving artists really a true statement during the last two years? I mean, I always, I'm an artist and an art administrator, but an artist first. And I, um, but I, I make my living by being an arts manager. I don't, I'm not a full-time artist, you know, like many of the artists are, but I feel like artists were able to easily pivot their practice because artists are creative, creative people and, you know, innovate, innovative people. But I think that they were able to, I think the whole community nationally, state-wise, county-wise, city-wise, I think that everybody kind of, um, you know, got moved into action with supporting artists and offering grants, small mini grants, like many different organizations offered um, COVID, COVID grants. Mm -hmm. um, OLCDC also offered funding for our community, non-artists for everybody um, to help with um, any, any needs, food or electricity bills or any of that sort of thing. Um, but I also think that we learned as artists and, and arts programmers, arts administrators, that we can do things digitally. You know, before, from my whole 27 years of working at six museums um, over the last years, we've always thought we have to be engaging with the public in person. But this helped us learn that we can also engage with people just like we are right now on, on a Zoom call. And, and that helped OLCDC reach way more people instead of just reaching people in Opelaka or in Miami-Dade County or in South Florida. We, we had programs that we were reaching people across continents and across countries. And that was a first for us. And so I think that you know, now coming out of the, the pandemic a little bit and, and being able to interact a little bit more, we're learning that even when we have in-person programs that we need to continue to have these online programs at the same time, because then we can engage folks um, geographically in different places, but also people who don't have the time or, or don't have the access to be able to come out to, to the, you know, to the ARC to see our exhibitions. And I was going to ask that question, Adrian, um, as far as, you know, will it just go back to being in-person uh, exhibitions or will you continue the virtual? Because you're right, you, you can definitely touch more people or people see it, you know, on Eventbrite or whatever, and they just click on it and they, they see this same beautiful art that we're watching right now, but they're doing it from the comfort of their homes. Do you think there will ever be a time when we just go back to straight exhibits where it's only, you know, people only, and you can only see it if you come to South Florida? 
I mean, I think, you know, it does take resources, time, money, people, power, um, in order to have this, this multi-tiered programming, um, including in-person and, and, um, and digital engagement. And so I hope that we continue to do it as much as we can, but I have a feeling that as we get back to being COVID free, it might just time and resources and, and money, you know, might affect, might affect the fact that arts organizations may or may not continue to do it. And, and actually I noticed that some organizations are, are opting out of doing virtual because they want that, that deep connection. They, they want to connect with people. They want it to be, you know, person, a personable type thing or, or they don't want their content. Sometimes artists or speakers ask not to have their, their panel discussion or their, their lectures uh, published permanently online because they, want, they don't want something to be on the internet for, for forever. <laughs> forever. You, know you say ever in a day, yes, <laughs> yeah, yes. Yeah, yeah. If you're just tuning in, first of all, welcome to Good Morning Miramar. I'm your host, Tamara G. We are speaking with Adrienne Chadwick. She is the arts manager at Opalaka Community Development Corporation, and they have this wonderful exhibit that is going on now. Uh, is it through August, Adrienne? It's called Beyond Tradition? Yes, the okay. exhibition will be up through August 28th. Uh, we're open to the public every second Saturday from one to five without an appointment, but any other day of the week, we're open by appointment. So you go to olcdc.org backslash beyond tradition. And there's a calendar where you choose your date and your time and you, we, we meet you here. Okay, great. And of course, this uh, exhibition challenges Western cultural norms and perspectives of what contemporary African art is by presenting these African sculptures. And they are from uh, different areas of Africa as uh, Adrian had mentioned. I wanted to talk about uh, the arts in general, you know, uh, as an arts manager and an artist yourself, you know that there really aren't any arts in the school anymore. And when I say any arts, I mean, no arts, no, um, you know, graphic arts, uh, singing, dancing, uh, band, none of, they, they've taken the arts out. How is that going to impact the future of the arts? Because, you know, kids aren't learning it. They aren't learning anything about it. Or, or will uh, talent automatically just shine regardless? I mean, talent, particularly folks from the African diaspora, we're innovators. Like we're, we're the people who come up with all the ideas and then the corporations, you know, kind of appropriate those ideas. Like since, since forever, since jazz music, you know, rock and roll, everything. But I do think that our, our society, we really need to, to rethink that, that lack of arts in education because even theater, like having a student be able to, now, now students these days are online on Zoom on, on um, the phones and the, and the devices all day long. And so I've noticed in my generations, a difference in the way that people are able to communicate, make eye contact, connect with other humans, you know? Mm -hmm. And so things like a theater class or performance class is so critical to, to, to young people engaging in society and being able to articulate their ideas or to be able to communi communicate an idea or protect themselves even from, you know, from people in power that might be telling them what to do, teachers or, or whoever, you know. Um, I think it's important for um, visual literacy because young people are preyed upon by, by the media, mm -hmm. um, you know, based on nutrition and based on consumerism and all of these things. I mean, in order to make, to make have a decision-making process and to have visual literacy is, is critical in that way. It also increases so many things academically, um, such as problem solving, communication, empathy, understanding each other. And, and art is really a, art, art shines a mirror on our society. Artists, artists are showing our society, you know, what, what we're doing and what we've done throughout time. And so I think that art will prevail always. And I think that um, artists will always be making art. And I don't think we need to think of art in a, as a paintbrush and a, and a canvas. 
young people are making art on their phones, TikTok and all these things that as we get older, we think, oh, these, these young people are, you know, just doing TikTok or they're just on the, on the social media. That's an art form. Everything that everybody does, the way that you dress, the way that you, the decisions that you make aesthetically, those are all, that's all art. And I think we have to, you know, um, engage and empower uh, young people that they are creative, that everybody's creative. And I'm glad you mentioned that because there also is the big push uh, in schools to include the arts in the STEM um, learning. And so to make it STEAM learning. And I mean, I can see that because literally everything that is created has some type of art related to it. Um, you know, the, the design that is made, the colors that are used, um, the font that is used to sell whatever it is that you're putting on your body and, and walking around in. So every that which is graphic art, you know, everything has an art piece. But why is it that why is it that that art is being treated like the stepchild <laughs> in the STEM program? And it should be it should have been steam from the beginning. But go ahead. <laughs> I think people don't realize that that art is being an artist doesn't mean that you're at a canvas with a with a paintbrush. Graphic designers, motion graph motion designer, motion graphic designers, filmmakers, um, clothing designers, architects, um, makeup public, artists, makeup, makeup artists, artists, fashion artists, like you know, there's just it goes on and on and on. It's not only those traditional traditional art forms that that you know, that include art, all those other things are creative, creative careers. And I think that people just think starving artists, like, you, like you started the segment with, right. and, and it's not, you know, schools like Savannah College of Art and Design and, and commercial art schools are showing, you know, young people how to use art as, as a career. And even if you are a traditional artist, there's different ways of selling these days, you don't have to have a gallery, you can sell online and you could sell through social media and you could sell in many different ways and so um yeah i don't yeah. remember what your first what your original well, question. The question was about oh. why is art being seen as the you know the stepchild or or, or people are reluctant to include to art include it. in the stem. it's just this stigma i think that that happens um but what about nfts also like look at look at where art is going with the nfts that's yeah. digital and and stem based art <laughs> and right. it's making lots of money and it's making lot, a big splash right now like who knows in the future maybe all art instead of seeing canvases or drawings on the wall maybe all art will now be digital and, art that you're looking at on a screen right um and i, I thought about um what are the things they put over your eyes the the um uh, uh the, virtual re reality virtual AR. reality um i mean just a, a hairdressers you know, they're the quintessent uh, nail people and, and pedicures and so. I mean, some of the designs I see on people's nails, I'm like, wow, somebody actually, you know, set and did that. That's pretty, pretty nice. So yep. art is everywhere, people, in case you didn't know it. And it's also an Opalaka <laughs> at the Opalaka Community Development Corporation. So tell us once again, Adrian, how people can go to see Beyond Tradition and see these beautiful sculptures and how you all have that. Uh, they are at the art exhibit because I'm telling you, it looks like a Zoom background. <laughs> it's so pretty. <laughs> Thank you. So the Opalaka Arc is located at 675 Alibaba Avenue, Opalaka, Florida, 33054. Um, you can also visit olcdc.org backslash beyond tradition um, in order to schedule your calendar date and time to come and visit the Arc. We're also here every second Saturday from one to five, and we, we will have um, various programs uh, coming up like an Afrobeats dance party coming up, uh, an African um, marketplace. Um, we're trying to get uh, an Ethiopian coffee ceremony happening here because that, that, you know that's an East African country and, and we're focused on East Africa here mm -hmm. um, and some hands-on art workshops also. All right. And so we're here until August 28th. August 28th. So check it out beyond tradition. And again, if you want more information, OLCDC, Opalaka, cdc.org, olcdc.org, uh, backslash beyond tradition. Uh, you can always go to the website to find out those hours. Of course, it's located at 675 Alabama, 
uh, Avenue in Opelika. And thank you so much, Adrian. Uh, I'm sure you guys are going to be having more exhibits to come through and we would love yes. to have you on again uh, because we, we definitely want to encourage people to love the arts in any shape, form or fashion. Uh, this would be great for kids to come and, and, and teachers to bring their children, uh, get their kids, uh, as well as adults or just anyone who wants to know more about Africa and as well as these beautiful sculptures that you have here. Thank you so much, Samra. You're welcome. And thank you for watching Good Morning Miramar. Again, thank you to Adrienne Chadwick. She is the arts manager at the Opalaka Community Development Corporation. That website again, olcdc.org. O-L for Opalaka, cdc.org backslash beyond tradition or just go to the website and find out their hours and how you can get in to see this exhibit before it's gone in August. Thank you so much for watching. Good morning, Miramar. Until next time, I'm Tamara G.